so thank you Rudy for attending and, and thanks to the Power BI Ideas and Power Break team for giving me the opportunity to present. Um, so this, we're going to talk about some kind of fairly simple principles from a data visualization perspective. But before we do that, it's kind of to think of some things prior to that. So to, to visually communicate insights, we have some simple goals. So the visual processing should be simple and obvious. Um, so that means when somebody's actually looking at one of your reports or dashboards, they should be able to quickly understand exactly what is telling them and they should be also be able to understand whether the it's good or bad um, or whether it is indifferent. So it's something what the term the low cognitive load. If you have to look at a particular visual or a dashboard or a report for a long time before you really understand it, then probably it's missed the mark from from its its primary goal effective. And once the kind of visual processing is done, then the insights should be easy to understand and derive. So it should be easy be able to spot trends or patterns, or actually have the ability to kind of to slice and dice um, and filter uh, to actually drive towards bringing out some insights. And what the other thing is really important as well is the user experience, right? So making it uh, intuitive and enjoyable it shouldn't be difficult to use it, it is very much a um, you know almost like a web app if you want to kind of consider that and it should be fairly intuitive and the other thing is if you want to you know we're aiming to have a high level of adoption of the reports and dashboards that we develop and uh, we want our customers to like them we want them to use them um, and for that we need to make them visually appealing uh, easy to use and insightful, which is just a, a summary of the other points. So uh, introduce a simple set of principles um, and we're going to have a look at some of those uh, features in Power BI and we may talk about some of them just um, in points, but also, you know, we do have some examples of good and bad, um, you know, images of each effectively. So there's anybody who's been around in data visualization for a while will know there's a lot of material generally available, right? There's people publishing books on a regular basis, and there's lots of, you know, PhD type papers and everything else around data visualization. And there's a few industry luminaries, if you like, who, you know, who do a lot on social media as well. And there's, there's lots of opinions about how to do things right, how, how not to do things, what you should include, what you should exclude. And often you kind of think, well, where, you know, where do you start really? Um, so I think that, you know, in, in my opinion, um, I have to say that is my opinion, right? So um, it can be simplified into an easy to remember set of guiding principles. I think I've read several books and a lot of them come across with the same kind of ideas. And when you actually think about it, it does break down to be a fairly simple process. Um, and also, I like a bit of alliteration, right? Who doesn't? Hence the six C's of data visualization. All right, so the first one, consistent, and we'll, we'll go into each one um, in more detail. Clean, clear, context, creative, and call to action. So if you kind of think about those six things, again, they should be easy to remember, and that's why it's, the alliteration comes in handy as well. Uh, while you're kind of developing reports and dashboards, it's definitely going to to help you on your journey as you move towards doing more complex reports and visualizations as well. So let's start off with consistent, right? Okay, so be consistent with everything. Um, and there's obviously there's this except because there always is an except. So page layouts and visual encoding. I think that once you actually start to develop a high number of reports and dashboards you want to make sure that your pages have a similar layout so that when people are shifting between reports they can instantly again that cognitive load is reduced visual encoding so how do we actually show certain insights or certain stories make sure that's fairly consistent as well colors be consistent with the colors right so um you know see dashboards where you have different colors with different categories uh, for the same categories even you know there's no real kind of uh, consistency in calling things out and it just makes it even more difficult for the actual user to process fonts uh, in particular you know type size and weight uh, really important that they're consistent 
buttons and navigation. Again, we do have the ability to have buttons and navigation within Power BI and within other dashboard tools as well. Uh, make those consistent. If somebody presses a back button, they're going to expect to go back a page. If somebody presses a, a button to actually move to the next page, they want to expect move to the next page. So again, just make it kind of consistent and easy. Um, and then more kind of under the hood effectively, or you know what, you know when you're actually designing, right? The metadata and the semantic model. So be consistent with table names, column names, and measure names. Again, it just it just starts to promote familiarity with your users, uh, and they'll they'll you get used to um, using those things. And it should also be in the language of the business as well, right? So if if you call something revenue within the business call your measure names revenue right don't call them sales or something else call it revenue um and just a few other gotchas there so be consistent with everything if you can right so there might be some of the things that are decided for you where you you can't get that level of consistency um and then talking about colors that could be a whole session in itself right just um and it could be a, a whole day talking about how to use color when to use color when not to use color and so on as well. So um, a lot of that is already decided for us. So depending whether we're doing consultancy with other clients, whether we work with uh, with an employer, a lot of those things we already are already uh, decided by the corporate or marketing teams. There is already a, uh, you know, a corporate color palette that you have to use for these kind of things. So often we don't often we don't we don't get the choice to use which colors, uh, but when we do, then there's, there's lots of choice there. So I'm just going to switch over to um, to Power BI. And it's going to be easier if I just if I do this in the service, I think. So the first thing we look at is consistent, right? So um, he's kind of, you know, a couple, an example of a couple of examples of some what is not consistent, right? So uh, we've got two uh, two bar charts here. They're showing the same thing, but they look very, very different. Uh, we've got different font sizes, different uh, for different purposes. Uh, we're calling one revenue by category and one sales by product groups. They're two different things. Again, that's just going back to the consistency in the naming. Um, the colors are all different. You can see that smartphones and a lower one is uh, purple and the smartphones on the top is that kind of uh, teal color. And, you know, I may have over exaggerated this to drive the point home, but um, with lots of colors. But I think, you know, you, you get the idea that it, it doesn't look good because if I see smartphones on a visual in that teal color, if I see smartphones elsewhere on the page or elsewhere in the report, I expect it to have the same color attributed to it. So I don't want to kind of see different colors for the same thing because I'm going to instantly connect the smartphone to that color in my brain as I go through the different pages. So kind of moving on from that, a better example, right, is where we, we just have a single color for the categories. We don't necessarily need um, lots of different colors. Um, and often, again, going back to that low cognitive load, if I did have those all of those using those lots of those different colors, I'd have to have a legend somewhere, and that means that someone's got to read the legend, figure out what wh which color means which, and so on, uh, and, and other things that might go along with that. So, keeping it kind of fairly simple um, definitely helps. So, we switched now from kind of being you know a lot a myriad of colors, inconsistencies in the font styles, the weights, and the sizes to you know at least we've now got we may still have different sizes but all of our titles with the same all of our visual titles with the same size the uh the, the axes values and titles with the same size as well so we've shifted now into something which is a bit more consistent all right so how do we how do we do that in in power bi so i'm not maybe going to demo everything oops with this one um so there's a few things we can use, right? So for those of you who are familiar, we've got themes uh, which are available from the ribbon. Um, so if, if we go into Power BI Desktop, uh, we do have the ability to actually switch to um, the view there. And then we've got um, various themes that are already pre-built. And I can just select one of these themes, or I can actually start to customize the current theme as well. So I can change that, um, and, and that is now, it's a much easier experience uh, in the last, it was changed maybe 
five or six months ago. Um, it's a much better experience now to actually be able to change uh, change the theme and to suit your needs. Um, previously, there was uh, some things which were available from, and there still are, right? So there is a, so the theme, the custom themes are, are stored in a JSON file, uh, which defines the color palette attributes, uh, generally on specific visuals. Um, and there's also a, a tool on Power BI tips, if anybody hasn't been there, which would generate the standard JSON themes if those standard Power BI ones don't suit. Um, the other important thing is use templates. So anybody who who hasn't used templates previously, um, if we in Power BI Desktop again, we can um, export our uh, report to a Power BI template. And what that means is that will that template file will be much smaller uh, than the original than the PBIX file, but it will it will contain all it will contain the theme already. Um, you can you know design and style consistency for different clients and different business units. So we have we have a library of different uh, different themes basically, um, which um, which are suitable for different business units because they have their own. Uh, likes and dislikes from a visual point of view, um, common page layout and styles, metadata for queries and data sources. So within the actual template as well, you can also have in there definitions for what the data, data sources um, and things like if you have a calendar and power query, that can already be in a template as well. Uh, and you can really use those to accelerate development. So that's really useful. All right, so I'm not going to demonstrate any of those things. I'm, I'm assuming that most people know how to use those, um, but if if we really need to, I can. Um, okay, so the, the next one I want to talk about is um, is something called clean. Okay, so this is the next one. So this is where we will kind of we'll declutter visuals, right? So things like borders, grid lines, axis titles. Um, they can all go, right? Well, um, unless they're absolutely needed, right? So sometimes you do need access titles, but on a lot of visuals, if you have the right, if you're using the right visual for the right kind of insight and the, the visual title should be enough to understand easily exactly what's being shown. Um, use backgrounds where it makes sense. So if you have, again, a certain design style, um, you know, use use a background. It can help you Rather than ch moving things around on the um, on the actual canvas, if you use a background, everything's already uh, in one place. And don't place too much information on one page. Uh, usually, four to six visuals are sufficient, depending on the insights. And you'll also find that, again, going back to the low cognitive load, if I have more than that many visuals on one page or uh, in one part of the screen that I'm viewing, then that comes quite difficult for me to actually process. Uh, and view right so keeping the reducing the number of visuals uh, reduces that cognitive load but it can also actually improve performance as well um only keep uh, what is essential to the page or visual um align everything um again there's a gotcha on that one uh, keep the white space equal between visuals if you can so um you know although you can have multiple visuals on one page don't want them having again it's all about that kind of cognitive load and the visual acuity people will just see that things are either together or they're not uh, if that white space is is equal between the visuals um, and generally it will flow from left to right top to bottom uh, of course that depends on geographic and cultural needs and who the audience is but uh, for a lot of the work that we would be doing um, it, it would be from um, left to right and top to bottom. And just, um, you know, align every from a, a consistency point of view using backgrounds. Um, you know, the, the, added, the other advantage there is that there's fewer visual elements on the actual canvas, uh, which will help improve performance as well. There's been a couple of good blog posts recently about how much of a difference that does can make. Um, and then obviously, you know, the aligning everything, unless there's something you specifically want to call out, right? So if you want to place one visual the top right, so everybody look over there straight away uh, on the top left, then do that because that, that might be the most important thing um, or the most important part of the story that you're trying to tell. Okay, so just switch back to um, the service uh, and we'll, we'll talk some more examples as well. 
So and we'll, we'll, the way this is this works is it works through with one visual effectively, um, and we, we will process all of the we'll we'll kind of examine that visual under these each of the six C's effectively to see just how um, how that journey develops. So this is from our previous one where we went to uh, we went from a consistent one with a lot of horrible colours. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad um, example of this, but if we look at a different example, you'll now see that there there is a difference there, right? So that you know we've removed the border around the visual, so my eyes aren't drawn to the border. My eyes are just drawn to the actual title first. Then I'm looking at the category labels and I'm looking at the values, right? And because I've removed the the axes, the x axes and then the, the title to both of those uh, and I've added in data labels on on the actual visuals and I don't really need to have the axes on there because I can just look at that I can understand this is revenue by category this is the category here and this is the revenue I don't need to see um, you know another axis on there because I can see already and it's sorted in the right way by largest to smallest uh, which is for this particular visual is, is a thing that I really want to look at so now we've kind of we've applied some of those things from a, a clean perspective. We've decluttered it. Um, and if we had multiple visuals on one page, then you know we would have all of those lined up as well. All right, so let's just go back now to the, the deck again. Um, so how can we do clean in, in Power BI, right? So um, there are there is a display grid and snap to grid options when developing. I don't know if anybody uses that, um, but uh, it can be quite useful. Um, enable the smart guides in the Power BI options, um, themes and templates as well. Um, and again, will help you get things clean. Get one visual right and copy and paste is always our friend, right? So, um, and then the format painter as well. And we can use the format align options, um, like align the top distribute horizontally and so on. And that, you know, that does make a difference. It, it helps you get things lined up properly. Now, some of you may or may not know this, but the so the, the display grid, the snap to grid don't always help, but if you use the arrow keys, um, that will move the visual one pixel. And if you shift an arrow key, it will move it 10 pixels in the direction of the arrow key. Uh, I'm not gonna, do it on this one because this is oh maybe I can um, it's not going to really make any difference. So if I look at this, if I if I select the visual, I'm doing up arrow here, which obviously you can't see particularly well because my camera's not pointing at that. But you can see the visual moving very slightly, and if I do shift and and up, it moves in a in a bigger block as well. So. Um, and the guidelines that we talked about were so when you move the visual, you see the red lines appear very much like PowerPoint, then that means it's in the right kind of position. Um, and this is all all in the options. OK, so if you look at um, in the view, you can turn on the grid lines there and you can snap to grid, uh, but sometimes that doesn't help. Um, but having the grid lines on might help as well. And then if you actually want to have the the red uh, lines on there, then you need to uh, go into options settings and turn on for the report. There's a global setting for uh, report settings, which is display smart guides when visuals are aligned. So if anybody hasn't had those turned on, I would definitely recommend turning those on because it does help a lot. Uh, OK, so back to the back to the presentation. So we'll talk a little bit about clear. So the next thing then is once we kind of cleaned our visual up, we want to make sure it's clear. Um, so we'll ensure the information is accurate. Um, obviously, really important. Um, use the right visual for the right message or insight. Again, we don't want to see uh, people choosing the wrong visuals for the different kind of insights. You would still be surprised how many people produce visuals for um categorical values using trying to use line charts and so on um you know it, it just doesn't suit and they should definitely be used more for kind of time-based things um be specific on what the visual is intended to show 
So use the visual title. So for example, revenue year to date rather than just revenue. Again, it's just kind of driving home that clarity message using the right measure and data formatting. Um, you know, when when you're dealing with big numbers, um, often it can be difficult to get those things onto the visuals in a, in a neat way. So you may decide to actually use the next um, measure unit up or the next display unit and might go from millions to something else, but then you know, just be kind of clear, you know, be careful on how that's actually formatted. Um, again, kind of being that being specific, make sure that the, the users are not confused by what or how something is shown. Um, and generally, um, you know, the visual interaction should be set to filter rather than cross highlight. I think that's the preferred in most cases. It may not always suit. Um, but certainly for pretty much every report that uh, I produce and, and the team produces, um, we always go for the filter method just because it, it's it's much easier. Um, and it it, show, it shows you things very clearly, whereas cross highlighting isn't always uh, isn't always like that. So. So again, kind of moving on from our um, our previous um examples this is our one where we've now got a clean um a clean visual without the borders and everything else so we're going to make just a very small change here right so we made a couple of changes so basically we changed this to revenue millions by product category um just in case anybody didn't understand what the M was for, right? So most people should, um, you know, and particularly the businesses, business users who are viewing this, uh, but they may not always be aware of that. And also we change the the display, the decimal places uh, slightly as well. So now you see this is uh, 5.2 million here, and that's because we had the, the dis it's set to just one decimal place, changing it to two, means we'll actually see that it's actually what 5.18 million and you know that's quite quite a difference between 5.2 and 5.18 um million so uh, i'd be happy with that difference for sure um but when when things round up just be a little bit careful when you're doing that uh, and make sure you just you're picking the right display units on there as well um so moving on to the next one then which is is kind of important as well so um actually we'll let's talk about how we can achieve some clear things in with power bi first so and, and this may sound a little bit strange but if you're not doing this then you should get into the habit of doing these things and it's not always easy i know that um i've tried testing them lots of times but when we our first point on being clear was making sure the information is accurate and that means we've got to really unit test um, things like Power Query custom columns, custom columns and measures, right? So that we want to be sure that we're doing the right kind of thing with the revenue uh, or with the profit or any measure or anything that we're calculating, which doesn't exist in the source data already. Uh, we've got to do, you know, individual, I'm going to call them unit tests for that, but it may just be as simple as comparing that to the report that the business used to previously get or somebody will say no our figures for the end of the quarter at the end of the month of a certain value must match that then you, you know, that's how you'll be doing the unit testing making sure that um you will the, the values match and then you can be fairly confident that the calculations are correct and there's lots of other ways you can do that as well you can kind of obviously you know in tools like um dax studio and things you've got certain options in there to to understand exactly what's going on from a, a dax perspective um and as we saw in the other things so set the data types and display formats correctly uh particularly for different you know date currency decimal and whole number data types uh, dates particularly just because of the screen real estate and uh, you don't really want the really long dates that seem to be defaulted uh, or default to your locale settings you might want to just show a uh, date month or even maybe even just month and year right so again just format them correctly um rounding on visuals as i said uh, as we saw on the, on the other one 5.2 million is very different to 5.18 million um so you know check the display units make sure that they're correct and then the value decimal place settings as well uh the title of the visual references the information 
um, displayed. Again, that's one of the changes that we made just to make things really clear. Um, and then use the right visual for the right insight or story, right? So, and again, that's not always easy to do. Um, and there's a couple of places that I would normally look at. So you got, um, there's a, a great visual vocabulary, which uh, Financial Times have produced. If anybody hasn't seen it, uh, I would recommend going to have a look at that. And then a guy called uh, uh, SQL Jason, I think, uh, Jason Thomas, did something very similar for Power BI as well. So it shows you different uh, visuals in Power BI for, you know, all the different, I want to show trends over time, share of the whole correlation between values, all those different kind of things. It shows you how, which which visuals to use in Power BI. And um, SQL BI have produced a visuals reference as well. I'm sure um, there's a couple, there's another one knocking around as well, which is from McCaw, I think. Um, which is uh, which is also pretty good. <clears throat> so that's just making sure that we can actually use those, uh, have an understanding of the right visual to use for the right insight. All right. So the next thing we'll talk a little bit about is context. And this, again, <clears throat> like colors, a lot to think about here. You could almost have a separate session on context itself. Right. So, but generally we want to start out with, you know, what is the story I want to tell or the problem that I want to try and help the business solve? We, we, we need to start out with a particular, whether it be a problem statement or I need to understand something or um, we know that there is an issue, then we need to actually build our report or dashboard around that context. If somebody wants to understand why we've seen a sudden increase in service desk tickets or why we've seen a sudden decrease in a uh, number of new people that are registered for a service. Um, you know, there's no point in having things which are not necessarily either relevant to that or driving that either. So um, that's really the first thing to think about is, is what's the story you want to tell or probably want to solve. Um, who's the audience, right? So who's going to be using this report uh, or dashboard? How will they consume it? Will they be using it on a mobile? Will they be using just a normal um, a Power BI service? Maybe even it might be embedded, right? So it might be Power BI embedded type scenario, uh, and they could be consuming it in a slightly different way. They could be do, consuming it in Teams, um, you know, SharePoint, all the other places where you can actually consume Power BI content. So again, just thinking about who, who are you creating a report for, and how are they going to consume it will also help you uh, make some design decisions, if you like, because you know that certain things may not work so well on mobile, so therefore that might make you um, change some ideas around um, how you want to uh, use certain visuals and how you actually live those visuals out. Accessibility, um, it's important to consider, you know, you need to make the, the reports accessible for the people. There are methods available to do that. Um, and we'll cover a little bit of that in the in the next slide. Uh, grouping common information together. So there's something called Gestalt principles, which is around kind of UI and what, what the brain does basically when it sees something visually um, about, you know, it joins things together, it colors, it, fills in the blanks, all those different kind of things are, are related to the Gestalt principles. So think about maybe some of those as well when you're actually putting the information onto a, onto a report or a dashboard and keeping things together. And that supports analysis and again, easier to understand and reduces that cognitive load. Uh, call out exactly what is being displayed and how it is measured. Again, part of the, um, the visual title. Uh, enable the user to drive their own analysis. It gives them the options to to drill and slice, right, um, uh, and various things to actually drive their own analysis. Um, give the user insight to to what's good or bad, trends, comparisons with previous values. So, if you there's, there's other things around, you know, visualization, which is it's like so what, right? So my revenue is three million this year. Well, so what? You know, what, what does that mean really? It doesn't really mean anything. Um, and compared to what as well? So are you comparing your revenue to a to a target? 
uh, or to you know the same the same period last year uh, or in the same period the year before even so all those things which are really from a context point of view to help the user understand are things improving or are they uh, declining right so um again that's the so what and the compared to what aspect of that um so just kind of looking at then we've, we've got a couple of examples of context in the service um so again rolling on from our previous visual okay we, we thought we had it about right um but now when we actually look further into it we make a couple of slight changes here okay so uh we want this to be a, a year to date right so now we've changed the title of that to be revenue year to date uh, revenue in millions year to date by product category um, because previously, I don't know in what context this revenue is, right? Is that for a year? Is it for five years? Is it for all time? I don't know, right? So, but in just change one small change here to the title instantly tells me, yeah, I'm looking at year-to-date figures uh, for the product categories. Um, and then adding additional context, if I hover over some of these now, we can start using things like uh, visual tool tips, um, to actually reveal more context without necessarily making things more complex to process visually, um, but just you know they know that the, that ability is there to actually uh, to hover over that visual, and there will be either a standard tooltip or a visual tooltip. And as I scroll through each of these, I can see that all of these are um, the revenue trend is negative compared year over year. Um, and with the ex this one is positive for tablets, uh, and this one is all of these are negative as well, right? So, um, so I can do that. So we can go some stages further than that, right? To kind of bring that message out more clearly, because that might be something that's really important to the business to understand which of these categories, where my um, year-to-date revenue for this particular year is less than my year to date revenue for last year right that might be a, a fairly simple measure or a comparison um but again just just bring that out so we, we we bring our other visual out so that's the same as the previous one and as it evolves now we can add some more context okay so now we call out basically that this is there's something different about this visual so different about this particular this particular category uh, and instantly my eyes will be drawn to that, right? So I don't really, well, I may care about the rest of them, right? But that's the one I want to focus on. So this is the one where the revenue trend is positive and all the rest of them are negative, all right? So, and I've, I've probably broken one of my own rules here because it's not immediately obvious that the blue is um, positive year over year trend and the gray is negative year over year trend, right? So that may not have been immediately obvious. Uh, it's only when I hover over uh, that that we do that. So, but we'll we'll fix that in one of the next visuals. So you can see as my kind of visuals evolve, I'm just looking at one specific visual here. It's changed quite a lot from how, where we started to where we've got to now. And I've just applied some very simple kind of, um, you know, framework to this, thinking about is it clean, um, you know, consistent, clean, clear. Have I got the right context? All right. So, excuse me. Um, so context. So, so how can we achieve that context? Um, so we can organise the page and the visuals clearly, right? So that's kind of fairly obvious. Um, we can use the alt text for each visual. Uh, so the alt text is is really useful for people who may be visually impaired. Um, and that will, if they're using things like screen readers, uh, it will actually uh, verbally call out what the what the visual is showing. Even just something as as simple as making sure the tab order is correct. Some people prefer to use keyboards uh, than mice. Uh, strangely enough, but you know it is possible. Um, so you know if you have the tab order correct, again, it's just really easy to do things like that. The right visual for the right story or the right insight again um, and always make sure that the titles the page and the visual help clarify the context 
group similar things together. So revenue and profit as an example, and use shapes or backgrounds to indicate that they belong together. Um, comparisons and trends, so use the same visuals where appropriate. So if, if I'm comparing my um, you know, trend of one particular metric versus a trend of another metric, I will either want them in the same visual or I want to use the same visual um, to show that. So if I'm showing a line chart over time um, for one metric, I want to show this line chart over time for the other metric because, again, that's so what or compared to what. I need to see them being shown in within the same context to understand whether one is improving or, or one is better than the other and so on. Um, slices and filtering, so again, letting the user drive um, the report of the dashboard by giving that drill through filtering is really good because it allows the user to actually um, to look at something within the context of another value. And we'll see more of that when we come to the, to the end. Uh, visual tool tools, which we've already covered, uh, and then measures and conditional formatting. So that, you know, using right measures, conditional formatting we saw was was really powerful. It kind of we looked, you know, your eye was drawn straight to that one blue bar immediately. You didn't know why it was blue, but your eyes was drawn to it. Um, so then, so we'll do just a um, a little bit more. So in in the service, so. Uh, so now we're kind of we're fairly confident about just changing some of these visuals ourselves. OK, so. So the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, just because we've got that um, some of those principles, it doesn't mean to say that we can't be creative, right? So we can still be very creative. This is just an example of some dashboards being created by the team or reports. You know, very kind of simple stuff, but you can see that they are very different styles, right? And we use different visuals for different purposes. Um, you know, so the, you know, we did some analysis on the, the Japanese insurance market as an example, and we just showed some trends here, but we wanted to separate those out. One was about growth, and then one was about a, a policy growth, and one was uh, demographics. But we put all the demographics in one particular visual, um, just to show. Um, things like population growth, uh, household growth, people per household and things like that. Uh, so you can see that they're very different styles, right? And you can also see that, you know, it, you don't have to, um, using those principles doesn't mean to say that you're gonna have boring reports or visuals. I guess that's that's what I was trying to say, right? So you can, you can still do an awful lot with those things. Um, so, and again, just kind of going back on that then, creative you know everyone's view of visually appealing is different uh, and you develop your own style right but if you kind of just use some of those fairly simple things to think about it will certainly help you start out on your journey and make sure that um, your your end users being pr presented with the right information in a nice clear and concise manner um, if you need inspiration and ideas check out the power bi galleries right so there's some there's data stories in there, there's various things in there, and there's some brilliant examples of creativity when you look at it. Um, use of backgrounds, images, and so on. Um, you know, there is a lot to to consider there. Uh, and you, it will give you some, you know, let's say inspiration and ideas as well. Um, don't feel constrained by the ideas today as well. So kind of they just to be a guide, but it's a how you can think about some of the things that you want you want to do, right? So and then um, as we go on to the last slide, right? So this is call to action. Um, and I might have cheated a bit on this one, right? But I needed something that began with a C to make six of them. Um, but maybe I could have left it as five. I could have even made it seven, actually. I, I had another one to use, um, but I left it at six. Um, so what do we mean by call to action? I'm sure we're all familiar with the phrase actionable insights, right? So, um, you know, your report and dashboard should enable the stakeholders to to see those insights, right? Um, perform their own analysis, perhaps. Um, you know, if you're not calling insights out clearly, do some of their own analysis. You know, filtering, uh, drill through all those different kind of things, um, and from those insights, then the stakeholders can make informed decisions and take action, right? Actionable insights. So, it's really important that you know. Again, we can make our dashboards look beautiful and reports look beautiful, 
the users really love using them, but if we're not really delivering that kind of um, actionable insight, there's no real call to action there. So again, that, that will harm adoption because people will just say, well, it's it's not really allowing me to, um, you know, to get to the data that I want to make the decisions that I need to make. Uh, and as you start to uh, gain experience, either within the business unit on, or with different clients, if you're more in a consultancy model, you'll start to actually su suggest specific actions, right? Or guide your users in a certain direction. Um, and that comes with, you know, you know, business experience, business knowledge um, of the specific problem. All right, so that finishes that little bit. So now when, when we kind of get to a point where I mean, there's no point in doing this if we don't bring it all together, right? So then when we actually start looking at some of these visuals that we brought together, and this is, you know, again, some of those things we, we can look at some of the uh, things that have been done here. So, um, you know, we see that we're measuring um, revenue trends year over year and profit trends year over year. Um, you know, there's a title here which clearly tells me that if profits are increasing, it's that blue color. If it's decreasing, there it's gray, right? So, again, looking at my revenue trend year over year, um, I'm down 407,000 or three, nearly 4%. And my profit is also down, but I can see that in different dimensions, right? So I can see that if I look at the product category, I can see here the scale of that um, that year over year difference is biggest on laptops. Okay, so that is uh, you know it's the biggest gray bar. And if I look at the profit, then you know I, I'm comparing year over year. Um, I'm down on the biggest thing is is to do with smartphones, right? So there are two areas that I probably want to have a look at. And in fact, you know, both laptops and smartphones are um, I'm my revenue is down compared to last year. My profit is also down quite a lot compared to last year as well. So that's definitely something that I want to drill further into. Um, and then if I look at a different, slightly different one here, so I've got by different sales channels that we use, I can see that the whole sales, sales channel from a revenue point of view um, is where uh, the biggest difference in year over year trend is. So it's negative um, and it's the gray color. And I've obviously got just some kind of general trend here as well. Um, and then the bottom, I've got the same for profit, right? So I've got the revenue is the three visuals at the top. Uh, and the profit is the three visuals at the bottom. And that just keeps those things together. I probably should have drawn or had a background that had some kind of outline around those. So you can see that they should all be looked at in one thing. Um, but it's fairly obvious that if you're going from top to bottom and left to right, I'm going to look at this as all to do with revenue and these are all to do with profit. Again, we've kind of we've put in some additional things like you know, I can look at from a geographical point of view in my sales channels, whether my uh, on a country by country basis, how am I doing from a um, increasing or decreasing perspective? Uh, and on both of these, I can drill through. So let's go and look at laptops, right? And I want to see what my uh, product category performance looks like. Uh, and I can drill into that and it will show me then again, you know what that looks like. I've added a little bit more color here so we can see from a and, a, and I use this particular visual because a line chart often doesn't let you see how how the change in rank is over 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 time, whereas the ribbon chart does and it's really good for that. Um, so I can see that obviously 2020 it's kind of a bit up and down and very down, whereas uh, 2019 was the top selling one, it dropped down, went back to the top, went down to the third and then the top again. So it's always been in the top one or two for the whole year. And whereas in my, um, in 2020, I, it's only been top selling for two of the months. So that's not as easy to see in a, in a line chart, but it is quite easy to see in a ribbon chart. And again, I've got kind of different breakdowns here of um, looking at laptops only. Okay, so in my retail and franchisee sales channels, my year over year revenue is positive. In the rest of the sales channels, is negative. So again, that's something that I might want to go and look at. 
um, and I've got a breakdown here by salespeople um, and so on. And, so, and then look at the products that we've sold. And I mainly did this just so I can actually use the um, select by um, rectangle, which is really cool. Um, so that that looked really good. Uh, and then I've got a similar breakdown by um, I'm just going to go back one page and a similar breakdown by the uh, by the oh, let's just do uh, web portal. Uh, 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 oops. Oh, I'm using a um, my laptop mouse here and it's not not behaving. Okay, so again, similar thing on the sales channel. I can see the change in rank as we look at the each year and month over months over months. Uh, uh, here I've got a slightly different breakdown. I wanted to see what the because it's related to sales channels. Is there anything from a geographic point of view that's going on? So I see there's only four countries here where my year over year revenue is actually positive. The difference of growth is positive. The rest of them are negative. And again. Only for two of the different product categories is my um, sales there. So that gives me the opportunity to make some decisions. All right. Um, so that's kind of pulling all of those different things together. You know, it looks like a fairly um, I'm, I'm biased, obviously, but I think it looks it looks fairly clean. Um, it's pretty clear what's what's going on. I can look at the visuals and understand what the, what is telling me from a decision point of view or a call to action. I can see where I want to focus on. I can see where my revenue is uh, is least ex is least growth, um, and that gives me you know I I can zoom into those and then start looking even deeper and start making decisions and taking actions and so on. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, so that's all. Just again, thanks for giving me the opportunity to present, uh, and I hope there's a bit of time for some discussion and questions as well. So I will stop sharing and maybe we hand it over for if anybody has any questions or anything in the chat, which I may have missed. Yeah, uh, I guess we have a question in the chat. Can report yeah. page tooltips work properly or uh, properly uh, on Power BI mobile uh, or have we alternatives? I I thought there was um, but I, I think it depends very much on the the mobile OS that you're using and I think it may not be possible to do with just finger gestures um, but if you have some a mobile where you have a stylus or something similar or a tablet then maybe you can um, I'm not 100% sure I have to say but uh, it's a good question though no? maybe we can Look into that. But again, that again, that might be something when you're, if you know that your report is going to be consumed on mobile, and again, you know that page tooltips may not work or report page tooltips may not work on mobile, it might be something that you say, okay, I won't use any report page tooltips. I mean, maybe that's that's not the right thing to do, but um, I think the other thing is when when you actually when you're developing on mobile. I mean, it just bundles all the visuals into the that kind of right hand pane for you to pull onto the mobile canvas. So I don't really think you would have the context of um, that tooltip necessarily on that visual. I mean, it would exist, but I'm just again, I don't do an awful lot of stuff for mobile, so mm. um, yeah, it may not. I think you would. The only way you would do that would be. Um, if you pinned the report page, perhaps then it would. But there's there's no there's no kind of hover over gesture on a mobile. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you can test it. Um, try try an error. So if yeah, it's not yeah, work, yeah. then uh, and and alternatives. I guess it are uh, good alternatives. So maybe you can make a drill through to another page. So if you like mm -hmm. to know more or. Uh, you can make a, a bookmark yeah. or something. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So many possibilities in Power BI. So I guess. Uh, uh, I think now with the with the drill through buttons and things like that, that, that opens up a lot more possibilities 
um, you know, because you have to just put a button on the page to drill through to something specific. Yeah, right. I I, I love the, the buttons for the drill through. Um, I, I only work with them because that's it's more intuitive uh, because nobody think about a, a right click or click. visual. Yeah, and... yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Okay, have we other questions or um, have somebody else something to say about visualization and Power BI desktop? Yeah. Anybody else? Maybe so I, I discovered today uh, that the text box is very annoying. Um, so the, the, if, if you like to, to roll well, this, the is the, this is the AI. Yeah, they're they're using the same thing, though, aren't they? Yeah, you have to <coughs> have the smart narrative, uh, new, and the same thing happened on the on the text box. So if you if you create a text box, this uh, smart narrative uh, overlay it, and uh, you can't see your text anymore. <laughs> oh, really? That's, that's really annoying. But uh, Will Thompson had said uh, it, it's a uh, uh, common um, yeah um, error <laughs> or. Yeah, they, right. And uh, it's it's on the list. So in the next update, I guess we will have uh, our normal text box back, hopefully. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, and I, I sent you the presentation as well. So if you want to upload yeah, that somewhere or share it, then yeah, we, we, feel we free are to do a little so. bit behind, but we will uh, share the whole content from all Power Breaks, also the videos and the presentations. But we are a little bit behind, so yes. <laughs> yeah. No, everyone's okay. busy. Yeah. Have we other questions or? Any other comments? No. Thank you, Gavin. 